Hey, what is up all my retro buttholes? I'm Starlord and welcome to Remaster. A very shitty name that I've just came up with on the spot for this new series in which I talk about many games I would like to be remastered in 2017 and 2018. Now if you love old games like the ones on the Nintendo Entertainment System, the Nintendo 64, the PlayStation 1 and so on, then this is the series for you, this is the channel for you. I will be doing one game per episode talking about why I believe it should be remastered and kind of showing you a nostalgic trip down memory lane. So make sure that you don't forget to click the subscribe button and if you do enjoy this video then please remember to leave a like. <laughs> so the first game I am starting this awesome series off with is one called Time Splitters Future Perfect and I'm actually pretty sure that most of you guys have never played this game before and the reason for that is it was released on the PlayStation 2 in 2005 and do you know what else came out in 2005? Yes, that's right, the next generation of consoles. And unfortunately, the developers never actually planned for this, and the game kind of got left behind on the last gen consoles situation, which was very, very horrible. Now in 2005, when I first played this game, I was 12 years old, but when I think back in my memory, I can remember everything about this game so fucking clearly like it was yesterday. It is so horrible to know that it has been so many years since I've actually played this game. Now Future Perfect was actually the third game in the Time Splitters franchise in which you take control of a man called Sergeant Cortez and to me I remember playing this game all I used to think was holy shit my guy is Vin Diesel. I am playing as Vin Diesel right now like honestly Tell me that is not fucking Vin Diesel. Like seriously, that is all I used to think while playing the campaign in this game. Like, holy shit, I'm playing as Vin Diesel. Like honestly, please, if you're watching this, like comment below and tell me I'm not crazy. That is fucking Vin Diesel. Please agree with me on this, please. But I'm afraid you've let the cat out of the bag now. Anyway, like I said, this game is focused on Cortez, a man who has to go through time in order to stop a race from ever being created. And this race, of course, is called the Time Splitters. He has to go through the past, the present, and even the future. And it actually brings up these crazy kind of timelines that you just thought were absolutely insane. Like, I remember at one point throughout the game, he jumps back in time to 1994, in which he meets a girl called Beth Joe Casey, or Joe Beth Casey, and there's actually a haunted house with zombies all around it, and he's like really confused, he's like, what? And you have to go through the house and kind of help her out, killing everybody, and it's just so fucking insane. There's just so many different random things that happen throughout this game. And what makes it even better is it kind of reminds me of the Back to the Future in terms of you see your future self and your past self and even your present self, which that doesn't make any sense because your present self is you. So, fuck. Fuck. It's going to get a bit hairy from here on. Okay, okay, so it gets kind of confusing when I bring that kind of stuff into the game. So basically, when you are stuck on a mission at some point, you will most likely see your future self helping you out. So there is one part of the game very early on where you need to get past this big, huge iron door and somebody like kind of whispers to you and you're like, huh? So you look up. And it's your future self giving you the key to the door. He's like, hey, you could, you look like you could need you need a hand or something like that. And then he's like, holy crap, we've created a time paradox. And he's like, I know, it's cool, right? And he's like, hey, make sure you keep that key. You're going to need it for later. And he's kind of like confused why he will need the key later. And then later on, you do the exact same thing that your future self did. You actually see your past self going and trying to get through the door and then you pass the key to them and basically say exactly what your future self said to you when you were your present self but now you're your future self telling your <laughs> what the fuck was this game about hey 
up here. What? But you're me. <laughs> I knew you'd say that. Here. A key. W what does it... You'll figure it out. Just make sure to pass it on when you're done. What the hell just happened? Okay, so I am making it sound really, really fucking confusing, but I'm telling you right now, the story mode of this game was absolutely fantastic, and it had me engaged through the start to the finish. I honestly wish that the game developers could actually bring out a new game, but unfortunately, they just can't. Now, the reason for this is Free Radical, the people who were actually halfway through developing Time Splitters 4, was then bought out by Crytek. Crytek bought out their company. Company. And then the CEO of Crytek said, no, we are not going to be making Time Splitters 4, it will not sell well, we don't even know where to begin with selling this game, and basically, that kind of upset a lot of people, including the developers of the game, in which then they actually proposed that they make a crowdfund for a Time Splitters 4, and then the Crytek CEO basically said, no, we are not going to be doing any of the crowdfunding things, we are Crytek, we are above that, so no. And unfortunately, that is basically the end of Time Splitters 4. Ouch! That's not cool, man. Now that is probably one of the most heartbreaking things I have ever had to read out loud because I really love this game and it wasn't just because of the compelling and interesting story mode, no, it was really a part of the multiplayer that this game actually had. It kind of reminded me of Halo or Goldeneye but really, really, really fucking wacky and I had so many hours of countless fun just killing bots or killing my friends couch co-op just playing and playing it was so fucking cool. They even had like an arcade mode in which when you complete missions you unlock characters from those missions so like in the multiplayer you could go an evil snowman or somebody who resembled Hitler or a monkey with a big fucking gun or a cyber monkey. It was really off its fucking tits, like kind of like how Saints Row is off its tits these days, that's the way it was back then, but that was not a discouraging thing, it was really fucking fun, and I honestly believe if Crytek did decide to remaster this game this day and age as an arcade game, it would sell tremendously well, like at least on Steam or something, I would love to see this game. Yeah, it's time to split. Right, whatever. Anyway guys, we have wrapped up today's game. If you did ever play this game or you found it very fun just watching the gameplay in the background, then please remember to leave a comment down below and be sure to subscribe for more nostalgic games that I would love to see remastered, including an upcoming series sometime eventually on my channel called Retro Rewind, in which I will go back and play through games that I really, really loved. Anyway guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope you have an awesome day. And until next time, I've been Star Lord. Oh, see ya.